A box and whisker plot is really nothing more than kind of a nice visual way to represent data. So you see here kind of a list of numbers. It doesn't look that cool. Looking at it, I can't really tell the spread right away. I mean, I see they're kind of lumped together, but if I put it in this format, which is essentially a box and whisker plot, it's just a way to represent the data, especially a longer data set. In a nice way, you can quickly glance at it and, you know, uh, statisticians and scientists prefer this because it's so visually um, nice to look at. And so you kind of have these key values here, right? You have this one here, um, this one here, 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 and here. And what they are is A here is basically the smallest value. That's the easiest thing to deal with. That's the smallest value in the whole data set. So that's a no brainer, right? You also have E, which is the largest um, value in the data set, pretty easy. C is the median, which we learned recently. But B and D are weird. This is Q1, that's the first quartile. And this is Q3, which is the third quartile. And I'll show you how to calculate those. So a lot of people, when they draw these, some people just freestyle them and draw them. I think drawing it on a number line is smart because it'll really show you the spread of the data pretty easily. So let's go, let's find, first of all, our smallest value in this data set here is gonna be two. So let's come up to this number line here and say one, two, here is my smallest value. Now we can quickly do E, which is the largest value. Again, that's easy. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And here we're gonna have our eight. Now this is where it gets weird. We're gonna, the next step in, in building a, a, a box and whisker plot is to find C, this median value. And if you remember from the last lesson, a median is nothing but whittling down the data to the middle. And remember, before you can even start to do that, you have to make sure that your data is in order, which in this case, you're welcome, it's totally in order, okay? So we have, uh, we're gonna whittle down, right? So we're gonna chop the bottom and the top, keep whittling this one to this one, this one to this one, and sure enough, we found our median, which happens to be five for this data set. So C, the median value in this case is five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go ahead and put a dot there. Now, Q1, B, which is Q1, and D, which is Q3, those are weird, but they're, they're basically medians of their data set. So not including the median. To find Q1, you take the numbers less than it and whittle down to the middle, right? So taking just these three, not including the median, I would say him gone, him gone, Q1 is four, right? So one, two, three, four, and you have your point there. And now let's do the same thing for these upper values. We're gonna find Q3, which is D in this diagram. You have one, two, three, we have these values, not including the median, so we whittle him and him, and sure enough, Q3 is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we can draw our box and whisker plot, right? We have, this is basically, you have D to E as a line, you have B to A, this is a box, and then you have your median here. And the reason this is kind of cool, I guess, I mean, according to us nerds, is that there's some there's some data spread information, right? You can see some of the data skewed this way. You have a bigger gap between the median and Q3 than you do the median and Q1. You also see you have a bigger gap between Q1 and the lowest value versus Q3 and the highest value. So this these this these distortions are valuable to look at. Up here, I drew a perfectly symmetrical box and whisker plot. In real life, they should not be symmetrical. They should be warped like this. That way, this is essentially insight into um, information about that whisk and, bo and box and whisker plot. Now, just to make sure that you're like the total master at this, we're going to do another one. So we're going to do a totally different data set, and we'll kind of you can kind of work faster than I talk to see if you're a professional at this. But we'll do it, and you'll see something a little interesting about the second example with regards to the median. Okay, so here's a new data set, a new number line. And remember, let's always start with A and B. Those are the easiest by far. So we'll just kind of start there. And we can tell by looking at this that our smallest value right away is one. So let's put a point right here at one. Jumping all the way to the top. Again, these are in order, you're welcome. I mean, in real life, they might be scrambled. So step one to any of this is to write these values in order. But again, they're already done here. So let's take the largest value now is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, 10. Okay, so here is 10. We're already, you know, halfway done. Now we're gonna find C, which is our median. So let's whittle down to the middle. One, two, gone, one, two, gone. Him and him, gone, him and him, gone. 
him and him gone. What happens here when there is no median? It appears like there's no one, there's no last man standing after we've whittled. All you do is you average the two values to find the median. So this would basically be, this would be five plus six over two, which is 11 over two, which is 5.5. And that kind of makes sense. Just looking at this, what's halfway between five and six? 5.5. So our median here is right here. It's 5.5. So let's go. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, five and a half, right? So it's right there in the middle and that's legal. You can have a decimal as a median. Now for Q1, we the, don't include 5.5, but you do include the five. So we're going to whittle him and him, him and him. And our Q1 looks like three. One, two, three. There's our Q1. Up here, we're going to whittle again. We do include the six because six was not the median. 5.5 is the median. So we're going to whittle, 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 whittle. And we have eight is our Q3. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is our Q3. Now let's just draw this sucker. So here we have our line here. That was very straight. You're welcome. That was pretty, pretty sloppy, Joe. Here and here. You know, this is a box here. And then we have our median there. And again, it's skewed, which is good news. You can see really quick when you glance at this data, how it all lays out. The only other thing that some people find interesting about these um, box and whisker plots, and that is kind of one more analysis of the data, is what's called the I. IQR, interquartile range, right? So what is the IQR for any data set? And it's very easy. It's Q3 minus Q1. It's essentially the range between the quartiles, the interquartile range. And so you may analyze data sets and make these box and whisker plots. And then they'll also ask you the IQR, interquartile range. Very easy, Q3 minus Q1. In this case, Q3 was eight minus q1 is three the interquartile range is five and again that's a valuable piece of information how far apart are the quartiles and that'll tell you kind of how strewn out your data set is that's it and i think box and whisker plots are pretty cool again i mean if you're analyzing data which i'm sure you and your friends do all day at home it's a good way to visually represent it rather than someone give you a list of five million numbers um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you aced this topic